Good morning, Brother Kwame. How you doing? Ah, we about to get started. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so here we go. Bring them out. 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 Peace. Everything going good? Everything good this way. Let's get this water going. Let's get this water going. Ah. Oh. I am thirsty. Come on, drink that water with me, fam. Come on. This is that workout. This is one of those pillars. One of those pillars. Water is one of those pillars that we be talking about. Come on now, let's build. Let's get it. Come on, one more. Let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. Drink that out shame into your life. Drink that health into your life. Rehydrate. Come on now. I know you done had them salty potato chips. I know you done had some of them peanuts. I know you done had all that sugar. Come on now. Oh, oh. oh my God. Wow. Man, come on. Drink up some water. Let's go. You're Columbus. I know you've been eating on those grippos. Come on, let's get it. Mm. All right, I got my three out the way. All right, so now I'm gonna be sipping all throughout the day. So today. I want to wish everybody a great Nia. Where is my cheat sheet? A great Nia. I want to wish everybody a great Nia. Uh, also, of course, everybody know that Nia means purpose. So this is the principle which we're honing in on today. You know what I'm saying? We're empowering Nia throughout our day. Also, the myotic principle that lies on this day is balance. Um, the uh, hermetic law is rhythm. Um, male name is Kofi. Female name Afua. All right. Um, if you need a color, color is yellow. All right. So those are things you can focus on today to make the day more powerful for you. So now what we're about to do is we're about to do the toast. Oh, today's session, um, we're going to talk about the benefits of the eye shape breath. Now, I did a video um, for everybody that's doing the Goose Sharp Challenge where I teach you how to do the eye shape breath. But I want to talk about some of the benefits of the eye shape breath. You know what I'm saying? Because we you know, we say the first the first pillar is that air breathing, right? So we have a breathing exercise that we help people with, right? That can change the internal chemistry of your body. 
So in doing some studies on DMT last night, one of the things that I ran across, because like when you're doing research, you got to look at the pros and the cons. And uh, there was uh, one video that I was watching last night about DMT where it was kind of debunking some of the other information because it wasn't scientific proved, scientifically proven. They didn't say that it necessarily wasn't true, but they start going through and picking through some of the possibilities of, you know, how this is a possibility, this is not a fact type thing. Just point that out, you know, and uh, one of the possibilities that they focused on was um, that DMT, they don't know where DMT is produced, but one of the theories or one of the ideas is that it's produced, wherever it's produced, it gets stored up in, um, in, in, in neurons and in, in, in the place where the messages within the brain travel, right? And it builds up so that in the instance of you not getting enough oxygen, it releases this chemical to kind of help relax you, relax you, right? Which can explain some of the hallucinations of people who are deprived of air. Now, why that's important for those that practice the Ashe breath, because part of the Ashe breath is, one, rapid breathing, and then breath retention, right? What's going on with the breath retention? With the breath retention, we're giving the body time to pump the blood through the body and then release some of its oxygen in it right because like just like eating just like certain drinks we do we do too much um breathing we do a lot of breathing and we never give our body time to really release some of the oxygen that is flowing within us he has done some more research than timothy o'leary it was it was he correct it was he correct was he correct Timothy Leary, he was more on LSD, all right, um, dim, um, dim, dimethyl trip, tryptamine is a whole, it's, I ain't gonna say it's new, but it is the first hallucinogenic, it's, no, it's a hallucinogenic that we produce within ourselves, it's, it's in grass, it's in trees, it's in cows, this DMT is everywhere. And, and 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 everybody in a sense possibly have uh experienced DMT in a small at a small level. It's like one of those daydreams or um one of those when you're able to drift off. Um because DMT, unlike man made synthetic stuff. DMT is easily broke down by the liver. So you can have a you can have a DST piece and it'll last it'll come and it'll go. It'll be like a vision. Um if you ever had one of those moments of clarity, like I had a moment of clarity last night. You know what I'm saying? Where I couldn't move. I was just it was, I was just clear for a second. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. You know? So this is released in part of our breathing, you know what I'm saying? Or it can be released in our breathing. It can be built up for those times where we are doing breath retention, right? Because like I said, part of part of the system is breath retention. So um, part of the eye shape breath is known as the fire breath, right? But of course, I culturally appropriated that and, 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 and got that eye shape on there you know what I'm saying? But the piece is, in the proper practice of this breath, we give ourselves an opportunity. We give ourselves an opportunity to um, move towards a deeper state of consciousness. Can't think of their names, but there were students of Timothy's, one with a Spanish name who looked in ayahuasca, right? Um, uh, how you now? Um, ayahuasca. 
Now, ayahuasca is is a chemical combination that um, our native brothers down in South America came up with. They found a plant that produces DMT, large amounts of DMT. They boil this plant and they mix it with a bark that is a liver inhibitor. So basically, they allow uh, ayahuasca is a per perfect combination of DMT and this inhibitor that stops your body from being able to break it down right away. So it extends, it extends the experience of the, the couple of minute thing that you will have internally, right? It extends it for a couple of hours. Um, shoot, man, um, that, that DMT, shit, we're going to do, we're going to do one on that DMT. I'm just doing more research on it because I want to make sure that we got it right because this is something that, you know, this is something that, because you could do ayahuasca ceremonies. At least it's not legal here. But you can do ayahuasca ceremonies in groups, right? And it would be fantastic for some of us to be able to travel and do a ayahuasca ceremony. I'm down. I'm just saying. I'm down. Shit. You know, I done smoked weed and, uh, you know what I'm saying, did all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, you, you. So, this shit right here. You know what I'm saying? The the spiritual uh Carlos some I don't I looked that up for you. I, I have to look that up. But he's one of Timothy Leary's. You said he's one of Timothy Leary's boys. So for those that don't understand, me and Kwame is having a discussion about this DMT and the spiritual experiences that people have. Now some people have had the shit scared out of them, literally, right? But um, the experience, I think, is still worth a group of us finding out about it. And I'm not just talking about the DMT and just smoking the DMT. I'm talking about the whole ayahuasca ceremony. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm down. So, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I got to get out. Well, hell, I don't even have to get a group. See, because because I just put it out there in the universe, it's coming to me. So, you know, those, y'all better grab on. Took up where Timothy left off, and you ain't lying about that scaring stuff. Oh, man, listen, dude. Basically, basically, these hallucinogenics, Reveal what's deep within you. You dig? You know what I'm saying? What's deep within you. Now, black folks, we got a lot of demons. Right? So, we have to work through those demons. But, this is why it's good to be versed in the mythology. This is why it's good to be versed in the folk tales. Right? This is why it's good to be versed in the proverbs. Why? Because when you have these mystic experiences, right, your earthly knowledge ain't going to do you no damn good. You're going to need to refer to our ancestors that slew dragons. You're going to need to refer to our ancestors who told us who told us fantastic tales. Because a lot of these fantastic tales come from individuals who were, in a sense, experiencing this DMT internally. Right? So, you, you learn about the myths. Like, for example, when you, when you, when you read about the, the, the book, when you read the book, book of Coming Forth by Day, right? And the journey of the soul. I want you to think about this. It wasn't a dead motherfucker that came back and wrote this. This was a live individual that went through all those steps and laid out all those steps and all those beings that you were run into. What was going on? There was a television show about pineal gland and how heightening the experiences by decalcifying it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because the pineal gland is part of this. They, they haven't figured out how it's part of it. 
But the whole piece is that when we start working with, when we start really working with our bodies, man, I mean, these, these are magnificent tools. This body produces all types of shit. We have, we are a super, super organism. After studying the microbiome, I'm, I'm starting to understand, we are a super organism. We thought we, we honestly was running around here thinking that we was just one thing. Dude, we bacteria, we yeast, we, we're, we're everything on this planet, right? We have a trillion, a hundred trillion cells at our command. Now, I want you to understand this, right? A hundred trillion cells at your command. This means that if you are a negative individual, right? You are putting a negative, you're putting a negative thought pattern on a hundred trillion cells. I heard that Gregory say that he gave an example to this young dude. He said, dude, you got a hundred trillion cells in you. If you tell that hundred trillion cells that you can't go to Paris, guess what? You can't go to Paris. We got all, we are a super organism. And because we don't know this, because we don't understand this, because we don't work with this, right? You know what I'm saying? Because we're not breathing right, because we're not consuming the proper amounts of water, because we're not eating, uh, let's, let's just say it, because we're not breathing culturally um, culturally appropriately, if we because we're not drinking um, cultural appropriate water, because we're not, or just drinking period culturally appropriately, because we're not. Um, eating culturally appropriately and because we're not working and moving our body in culturally appropriate ways we're robbing ourselves of we're robbing we're robbing ourselves of the power that we have been promised it's crazy man it's crazy and the pineal gland fits right into that because the pineal gland we, we done broke the body down into systems when it's just one whole super organism. All super interdependent upon each other. And when one piece breaks, the rest of the shit start cascading down here. So, alright. Now, this morning, I'm going to experiment with my last ginseng. So let's go and get it. I am flipping it upside down and back up, upside down and back up to kind of get the uh, the 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 root to flow around. See, I'm thinking about using some of that ginseng root in that root beer too, so that people can have a total package. I love it. I love it. I love it. So right now, you can see the, the waterfall that is created by that live ambrosia. The only one that don't do this so far has been uh, the Justice League. It's a little bit more laid back. So, I'm moving to the third phase of the fast, which means that in a second, I won't be doing anything but water, fam. And then after that, the final phase, I'm going to be doing the total fast. But I done made it through the hard part. Woo! Man! Oh, man. I I put the work in on this, man. So when you open your ambrosia, always have you a spare cup, family. Always. Always.
Make sure you refrigerate. Not because it'll go bad, but it'll help calm it down a little bit. and allow you to keep your bottles just a little bit longer because if you do not, it will blow up. This is why some people come and get the, uh, the half gallons and gallons from me because they know how to work it. They'll get the half gallon or the gallon and they'll just pop it open every now and then. Look at that. Look at that. That brew is just waiting to get inside of you. Just waiting to feed the healthy bacteria inside of you. So now, let's toast our creator. Let's toast our ancestors. We lift up our glass. We toast the creator by whatever name you choose to call it, creator. We call on that great power to bless God and to touch each and every last one of us. We ask the creator to move in our lives and to move around us and move in our family and friends' lives, to move amongst our tribe, to help us within, with, with us developing our systematic process, to help us develop our personal system so that we can move to the next level of life. We lift up and we toast that creator by whatever name you choose to call that creator. We toast and we say, Ashe. From there, we move to our personal ancestors. Remember our mothers and our fathers, our grandmothers and our grandfathers, our great-grandmothers and our great-grandfathers. And we take it back as far as we can. We put in the work so that we can start building and understanding our family line, so that we can understand our family ties, so we can understand our family responsibility. We not only came down here with an individual task, but we came down here as part of a team. Our family has a certain task that we have to accomplish, which is a totally different way of looking at the world, right? We have to understand that we represent something bigger here, see? Because if most of us was running around here actually believing that we represented something bigger, half the shit that you'd be seeing on Facebook wouldn't be popping up about us. Right, but no, no, no. Right now we're living an individual existence. We no longer stand on the shoulder of our ancestors. We are here because of a random act of some scientific principle that happened out in the universe, rather than being the progeny of our ancestors. Right? But now we don't believe that here. Here we understand that we stand upon the shoulders of our ancestors. We understand that we came down here for a certain task. And we understand that we came down here for a certain group task. And we understand that by us lifting up our ancestors, we slowly start waking up that memory. Maybe that DMT got something to do with releasing some of those ancestral memories that are locked within us. Maybe because the pineal gland is calcifying because of all the junk we're putting in it, we can't, have, we can't access some of that information, right? But maybe by us developing a systematic process and living by life-giving principles, maybe this will open us up back so that we could plug into our ancestral memory. So we toast our grandmothers and our grandfathers. We lift ourselves up and we lift them up. Because when we lift them up, of course, we lift ourselves up higher because we stand upon their shoulders. So we call on their names. We call on them right now. So take the time to call on your personal ancestors while I call on my, my, my. Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert and Texana Davis, Herman Brown Sr., Rosalie Tilly, George and William Walton, Chris and Fanny Gatson, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris, Aunt Barbara, Geneva Brown, um, um, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Alvaro Brown, Gina Gaines, Uh, Cecil Ellis, Wash Ellis, Margaret Ellis, Wash Ellis Jr. Jermaine Jones, Jeremiah Tappet, Montague pittman -L, John Fillard, Normal X, Sapat Ma Ra.
Dr. Marianne Williams, Tony Clark. Elder Donaldson, Elder Hairston, Elder Farmer. Oh man, another ancestor just popped up in my head. I'm gonna find her name. I'm gonna find her name. Um, because I know one of the elders in the collective know her name, so I will be. I'll be reaching out trying to figure out her name because she used to come and she was a big supporter of a lot of stuff that we did um tony clark i probably said that already all right so we toast our ancestors and we say i say from there we move um to the present moment right now this moment is all we got so we're gonna live to the fullest we're gonna push through this moment we're going to live this moment as and make this moment count because in this moment is all our power next we're going to toast our children our children's children onto infinity we're going to lift them up we're going to continue to lift up our babies right and we're going to continue to salute the babies before they even are born and we're going to make sure we're going to make sure that we leave a legacy deep enough for them to want to turn around and toast us. So we lift up our glass. We say, Ashe. And last but not least, I toast you. Toast your challenges and your struggles. I, I lift my glass to any of the special libations that you may have. Alright? So with that, we say, Ashe. Ashe. Where you at? Ashe. I wish you peace power, joy, and 100 years. Ooh, that ginseng is bitter. Man, I really let that batch, woo, woo. But I feel it coursing through me. I let this one sit because I was trying to, uh, I, but I guess I can't. I, I just can't avoid the bottles doing that, and and I guess that's why they call the that's why they call ambrosia the champagne of kombucha. I'm loving it. So, I want to thank everybody for tuning in now and later. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to leave comments. I will get back to you. Um, be sure to hit the bell so that you know when I pop up. Um, and also, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? Also, the gum roll piece. I, I wasn't able to post it up. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see? Got that whole, got that whole process working. Be sure to follow on um, Gumroad. You know what I'm saying? Because you get plenty of free stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know you get information. Um, you got some stuff that if you want to purchase, you can. If not, you get it for free. But some stuff you just gonna have to purchase. But it's a real reasonable price. But the Ingusa Saba Challenge is totally free. And Goose the Cyber Challenge is totally free. And then on top of that, reduce the amount that you need to give to the journey to get one of these. When you give to the journey, the journey gives back. See, part of my vision last night was the fact that we do have we do have the ability as G and J to eliminate all gut related diseases within our tribe, hell within our community. Hell, within our race. Hell, within this country, the United States. We do have the ability to do that. After doing the research, it is definitely possible that with, with more research, right, and products like that ambrosia, we could eliminate all gut-related diseases within 
our community. Period. And the reason I'm saying, the reason I, I, I came to a point where I'm able to say this because I'm looking at some of the manifestos of some of those other companies out there, right? Um, Quest Bar says that their, their, their reason for existence, their mission is to eliminate all metabolic disease. Now, if they could say that, God damn it, you know what I'm saying? I could say that I'm going to eliminate all gut-related diseases, at least in my tribe. Everybody within my circle, those that are willing to work with it, willing to, to grasp the, the understanding of the breath, the proper the proper drinking, or the, you know what I'm saying, the, the culturally appropriate food, and the movement, man, we can eliminate, we can eliminate that. Then on top of that, throw in some good tasting, powerful some bitter ass ginseng um ambrosia we about to change the world all right this is brother Hot tim i'm out i'm about to go and do my show remember we're going to be talking about the eye shape breast and the benefits because we talked about the benefits of breathing but i have not directly talked about the benefits of the eye shape breath all right so be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the bell so that you know when I'm up here. I know I come early, but that's throughout the week, right? Because y'all know y'all got to catch me when you catch me on the weekends. All right. So, hey, Brother Kwame, thank you for tuning in. Um, shouts out to uh, my darling, Keisha Elaine. Good morning to you. Uh, also, Miss um, Chilla Tarpe, thank you for taking care of my son down there. And I think that's it. Of course, shouts out to Brother Kwame. I apologize for those that, that's been reading blog. I haven't been writing. You know, I've been going through this fasting thing and it, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. Then on top of that, with the whole, the whole neck and back, and I just discovered last night. As a matter of fact, I gotta write that down. One of the things I learned that a lot we have certain areas, and everybody should strive to find these areas. We have areas in our bodies where we store a lot of pain. I found the place where I store a lot of pain last night. I thought it was in my legs, but it's not really my legs. You know what I'm saying? I found out where I store a lot of anger, a, a lot of sadness, a lot of grief, because we sometimes, especially as men, we learn to stuff our emotions. And when we stuff those emotions, it goes places and it starts affecting us physically. This is, like I said, dude, family. Family, we putting together a system, right? A system where you can live your life, right? I'm just saying because this is this is what's crazy, right? Y'all gonna do what you're gonna do, right? But what's up with the fasting periods, right? I mean, I just want y'all to think about this, right? You like to drink. I understand, right? And I'm not talking about drinking that ambrosia. But there's periods of time where your body needs a break. Are we doing that? Why have we been taught that we supposed to go hard all the time? Right? Well, actually, we do need to go hard all the time, but we need to go hard in the right way. Right? It's like this. You could do what you want to do, but then you just got to build in a system to help re-energize you. You understand what I'm saying? To help, help, push the health to help purify or to push out the poisons in your body. That's all I'm saying, right? So I'm not talking about you making major changes. Hell, go and eat all the pork you want. I choose not to do that, right? Do all you do you. Do you. But there's a process that you could put into your life to where you're able to clean yourself out. To get rid of the parasites. Right? Because I'm confident 
enough to know that once an individual really starts working on, um, what's up, brother Sean King? Once a person really starts working on cleaning themselves out, some of the stuff they won't do no more. But other stuff we gonna do. Some of us, some of us spent our whole life smoking weed. For us to, for, for a motherfucker like me to walk up in here and honestly think that you're going to stop smoking weed or you're going to stop drinking, it's ridiculous. But the question I got to ask is, this is where I have a problem. If you can't smoke weed and do your job and do and, and build, see, because if you think when I'm talking about your job, I'm talking about going and working for somebody else. No, dude, we got to build for our children. If you can't do that, and smoke weed, then there's something wrong. You need to be cast away. Right? I don't need to even be dealing with you. But listen, family, listen. There is a method. Our ancestors have left us ways. Because our ancestors used to kick it. Hell, I want y'all to think about this. You know that in Kemet, the year was 360 days. Five of the days belonged to the gods. Which means that them must, listen, I want you to understand how hard the partying was, right? How hard the celebration was, right? Five of those days wasn't even recorded on the calendar because they kicked it and celebrated those five days. Each one of those days belonged to one of the deities. The major five that they, I, I saw, I said, um, I saw, I said. They called him Heru, the uh, senior. You had um, um, Set and uh, what? Neptune, right? So those five days, for that last five days of the year, totally off the calendar. Straight celebration. Now, we don't know what was happening, but we know some liquor was flowing, right? Not liquor like we drink, right? But we know they was kicking it, right? We know it. We, yeah, I'm just saying, right? So we come from a people that have always kicked it. So for us to be like, oh, you got to be serious and not have fun and not do you, no, that's bullshit. That's some bullshit, right? No, nah, family, that ain't how we build. That's not how we build. Those of you that like that shit because you can't dance, because you ain't got no game, that's you. You going over there. You 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 going over to that side and be there. But there is a certain section of the African population, of the black man and black woman that loves to get it in. Right? But at the same time, when it comes to us handling business, we able to get down. I just happen to be in that sector, right? And where, you know, my God ain't oppressing me. I don't you know, I don't believe in an oppressive oppressive deity and shit like that and you know what i'm saying a, a mean old man that, you know, that's gonna judge me at the end of my life um for some shit that don't even count towards my people that ain't me y'all can have that shit all right so yo this brother i tell i'm sorry i was supposed to get off of here a minute ago but i'm just saying y'all can have that shit right you know what i'm gonna be judged on is the legacy that i leave my kids the legacy i leave my kids' friends, the legacy I leave my kids' cousins, the legacy I leave for future generations, the ideas that I left for them, the, the examples that I left for them. That is, matter of fact, it ain't going to be no God that judge me. It's going to be my children that judge me. It's going to be my nieces and nephews that judge me. And their, their judgment of me the imprint that I left on them will be will to decide whether I go to heaven or just oblivion. Y'all talk about hell, fire. Let me tell you what's worse than fire. Being totally forgotten. Not fading with time, but just being forgotten. You, you, you don't even go a generation where people are just pouring out to you. You just forgotten. That's worse than hell. Hell. At least hell got heat. <laughs> you just 
move into oblivion. Right? We generational people. And we rely on each other so that we could come back. But when we start forgetting, when we when we when we forget, when when we can't when when we can't plug into the ancestral memory. You know what I'm saying? Because what I'm trying to do is wake up the ancestral memory to get you to realize that you're a generational people so that you can start calling on your ancestors. Because a lot of them didn't know. A lot of them didn't understand. A lot of them did the best that they could with what they knew. Now we know more. We need to really build on that shit, family. You know what I'm saying? We really need to build on that. We need to build on what we know and we need to be who we are. And stop trying to fit into some culturally inappropriate shit. This is why we lose it. Because we're trying to fit into everybody else's worldview. Right? Right now, it's West Asians. You know, but then when the Chinese take over, we're going to be trying to fit in with they shit too? No, we need to start being us. We need to be unapologetically black folk. We need to be unapologetically African or whatever the name of the continent because some of y'all niggas out there we want to discuss and have arguments about everything because we, you know what I'm saying, I don't I don't know I don't, I, I, I was part of that I understand, right? I understand. So, I just say black. You know what I'm saying? Those of y'all that look like me, those of you who have pigment, those of you that are catching the raw end of the deal in the political system those of you that are catching the raw end of the deal in the economic system Right? We need to formulate. We need to rebuild our culture. We need to start doing culturally appropriate shit. And start moving towards our destiny. That's it, man. I mean, I, I, I can't put it... I can't, I can't put it no other way, man. Um, oh, what's up? Is that Hazen? What's up, God? Man, listen. We need to stop playing, family. You know what I'm saying? You really need to stop playing. Start start getting yourself together. Right? Because I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Judgment coming. But it ain't coming from the angle that y'all think. Y'all think it's going to come from strangers. Mm -mm. Let me tell you this, right? This is how judgment works. You die. And people cry. You go to a church and they bury you. In the Christian tradition or the Muslim tradition, people speak about how good of a person you were and how now you sitting at the right hand of Jesus or you sitting at the feet of Allah and blah, blah, blah. And then they put you in the ground. They wear the shirt for about three days and then they forget you. And that's when your torment begins. Telling you. So, who gonna remember you? Are you laying it out so that they can remember you? So, so peace. Y'all gonna start y'all day. I'm about to get on here and do my my other the other part of the show. Actually, I shouldn't even do it right now. Cause I'm just like I'm I'm amped up right now, man. I'm amped. Uh, because I'm sitting up here like, God damn it. But, all right, Facebook, I'm out. Make sure you like, share, comment. Let's discuss, right? Let's discuss. Liberation, liberation is at hand, family. It's just a matter of us. It's just a matter of us recognizing what the ammunition is at this point in time, Right? You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let me let me talk about this. My sister Terra Hasa put a uh, uh, a message up on Facebook, and she went to go see Independence Day, and she said, "Why on Independence Day did they have the Africans? You know, when they went to Africa, they showed the Africans getting prepared to fight the aliens with spears and shit." Right, because we know that there's a a, a a warfare going on. So when you saw that shit, 
you got embarrassed, right? But we need to learn how to frame shit, even when they trying to fuck us up, even when they trying to, 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 to make us look foolish, right? I want you to think about this. I really think about this, right? You have a motherfucker, a person, a being, so dedicated to their cause that they would go into a battle that they know that they're going to lose, but they still going to go in and they take a spear. They ain't got nothing else. I don't give a fuck. I'm fighting. See, now, that's the story that I need you to get because it don't matter. When, when the shit hit the fan, it don't matter. Are you going to protect your family or are you going to surrender because you don't have a gun? Didn't have a gun. Are you going to pick up what's around you and go to war? Or are you going to surrender? See, we, 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 have to, we have to get to a mind state where we really understand family... There's some things worse than hell. There's some things worse than hell. And y'all need to really grasp that shit. Right? See, let me tell you hell. Hell is poverty. Hell, like for example, I told you last night, I had a moment of clarity. Right? I mean, it's like, I, I, I took a, a a cold shower, you know, I know a lot of y'all, that's part of the Nguza Saba Challenge. You can do that or you don't have to do that. But that cold water gets the blood circulating through your body. And it also helps your body start burning fat. I'm on a fast, so I need my body to burn fat. I'm trying to get my body to go through ketosis, right? Burn off all that old shit and start rebuilding itself. I have a moment of clarity. Sitting there in peace, froze, can't move. I mean, it's like, it's like I'm feeling it. I'm like, damn, I could last three days I've been hurting. I'm like, damn, I'm hungry and ah, I want to eat. Why the fuck did I say 21 days? Right? Mad and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, God damn it, I you always take shit to the extreme. 21 days, nigga. Like, for real? Yeah, for real. Because it's moments like that that make it worth it. So I get up out the tub, right? Dry off. Go to watch some videos. And I check my A email. As I check my email, right? Right on time. There's some, there's some shit in my email that's designed to pull me from where I am. To where they want me to be. Family. Warfare is a lot different for us now. Than we have been taught. Many of us think that warfare is about bullets. That's it. Because we are not thinking tactically. We are not thinking strategically. When I go to war nowadays. I am not. I am not going for bullets first. And we don't have to go for bullets first. You go for hearts and minds first. If you can control the hearts and minds of your enemy or your enemy's population, you win the battle. You don't even have to battle the goddamn battle. We got these motherfuckers going after our spirits, minds, our bodies, our emotions. They're constantly attacking us. They're constantly keeping us up under stress. So when I talk about hell... I'm not talking about some mystic place where fire is burning you. I'm talking about the hell of constantly being behind in your bills. I'm talking about the hell of not knowing whether or not you're going to have a job in three years. I'm talking about the hell of being not being feeling safe when you walk outside your goddamn house. Because, because the system has driven... Or people have allowed themselves to be driven crazy with this motherfucker. We at war. 
And sooner, the sooner that more of us really understand this shit and understand that war is more than about bullets. It's not just about bullets. That's part of it. That's the grunt work. Nigga, the, 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 the foundation of war, the foundation of war is, is about intelligence. All of y'all sitting up here quoting Sun Tzu and shit, but y'all don't understand that the mo the last chapter is the most important where you talk about the intelligence of warfare. You control the minds of the enemy, friends. Your mind is being controlled. You're doing culturally inappropriate shit. Culturally inappropriate. Totally culturally inappropriate. Some shit you need to look at and be like, that's culturally inappropriate and just keep it moving. Don't even comment. Don't even, don't, don't even put up angry, but don't, that's culturally inappropriate. Don't even put culturally inappropriate, just keep moving right past the shit. We rewarding people with attention. We rewarding, and when we, when you pay attention to something, you feed it. When you pay attention to something, that's your focus. When you pay attention to something, you're giving it your ashe. What did I tell y'all life care is? Let's go back. Let's look at life care. Life care. Excuse me. Life care. Woo. I want to make sure I get it right. Life care. What day is this? Okay, here we go. This is when I start getting it. Boom. Life care. The process of harnessing the ashe in our lives by the systematic use of life-giving principles. The life force. People are after your life force. Even, even when we go to war with guns, people are after your life force. Now, if I can't force you to work for me, if I can't submit you, and get you to start channeling your life force towards my goals, then I will take your life force. Life care is about us learning to, to, to harness and protect our Ashe family. That's the real shit. That's the real shit. Why? Because when I'm able to control my focus, like, I need y'all to understand this, man. We're moving into an economy that's totally different than anything that our, any of our parents ever experienced. Money is going to be dealt with in a totally different way. A totally different way. Finances is going to be dealt with in a totally different way. They're not, going, they're not going to be jobs out there like they used to. So we're moving into a new economy where we produce more stuff as a society with less people, which means that in some form of fashion, economically, they're going to have to balance this shit out because there's no way you could keep producing all this shit with fewer people. This means that you're producing a bunch of shit, but nobody can afford it. They're talking about going to electric cars. How many of y'all, how many of y'all could walk out right now and actually afford getting an electric car? And Fuck what Jay-Z said. You know, because I know a lot of you niggas out there quoting Jay-Z. Fuck what Jay-Z said. It ain't about credit, motherfucker. Jews or nobody else is running the world on credit. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? The real motherfuckers out there, the real motherfuckers that's running it, using currency. They got your thoughts. They got you working. They got your money. Right? Working for them. Interest is not... It's not credit, it's interest. That's the problem with black folks. We start using credit and start acting like it's wealth. Where the fuck they do that at? I mean, I'm smart enough to realize that shit. Shit, my kids understand. They don't like borrowing money from me. My kids understand credit is not wealth. Credit gives you the opportunity to go in debt. That's what that shit, what is debt? Debt is slavery. This is why... This is why, I want y'all to understand this shit. This is what the child support system uses. Child support system uses debt. Prison system uses debt. 
you become indebted and then you are able to be put under check. This is why they will send a motherfucker to jail who was stealing money and then find the motherfucker two hundred fifty thousand dollars after they took all his money. So you go to jail, you come out, you're supposed to pay back two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Why? That means you are a servant. That means you are a slave. That means you have to take any job that comes to you. Menial labor. Slavery. Y'all don't understand this shit? Y'all can't see this shit? I'm sorry. Um... Family, I'm telling you, listen. When you start taking yourself through a systematic process and you start harnessing your life force, you can never look at the world the same again. So, if you happy being an ignorant motherfucker or an ignorant father fucker, stay. Because once you start, once, I'm telling you, listen, listen. It's bad enough that once I start talking to my elders, I was permanently trapped. I was tricked into consciousness. Because if I known that the shit was going to be like this, I wouldn't have never did this shit. But it's too late now. And I'm in it. And I don't believe in being on a losing team. I Listen, I'm a motherfucking South Ranger, right? But we... We we used to dominate. I'm used to dominating, right? I come from I come from that type of shit, right? Garfield Ram, right? That type of shit, right? Form me into who I am. I'm a I'm a Ellis. I'm a Brown. I'm a Davis, right? Bloodline. Right? That just that flow through me that says, nigga, you are you were put here to survive. Not just survive, you was put here to thrive. We survive so that you can learn to thrive. Your ancestors put you where you are right now so that you can start learning to thrive. It's our time. It's our turn. Fuck the Japanese, fuck the Chinese. We done gave everybody opportunity on this planet to do their thing. Now it's time for us to do ours. Family, it's time for us to turn our hustle up to unlimited. It's time for us to go super saiyan. Just saying. I'm just saying. For those who don't understand the super saiyan term, look it up. Saying. Super saiyan. Look it up. You know what I'm saying? Hell, we need to go God saying at this point in time. All right. I'm sorry. Y'all have a good morning, man. Peace. Let me finish my drink.